chapter 32, Lamed Bays, and this is the heart of the Tanya, Lave, the Lave of the Tanya, first of all, for several reasons. First of all, this is technically the, the, the middle of, pretty much the middle of the, the, the Sefer. Um, but not only because it's the middle of the Sefer, this is the heart, this is the essence of what Tanya is here to teach us. And also this is Lave of Tanya because this chapter speaks about love your fellow Jew just the same as you. And um, it is also very much connected to what we are experiencing these days, this uh, feeling of unity, of true Ahdus uh, within, uh, within Am Yisrael. And um, it's interesting because there, um, um, there are two big, big questions. How is our Ahdus unity different from um, the, the, the unity that we might find in other religions and especially talking about the Muslims, especially talking about um, uh, the jihadists, the terrorists, uh, um, the Palestinians there in, uh, in Gaza. Um, what, what is the difference between the t these two things? Maybe do they have a sense of unity? Um, um, so people say that the entire Arab world is united. They had a whole summit where they gathered together all of their leaders and in order to help the Palestinians, they didn't help much, but uh, at least that's the first that they're trying to show. Is there a, perhaps a difference in the unity uh, of, of the two? Um, what is the difference? And also another interesting question is how long is our unity going to last? How long is our unity... Um, uh, how, how, how long is our unity going to last? Which means it's a big question, you know, there, was, there, were, there were big, big um, um, protests that were happening in Israel for a year and not everyone uh, has changed their political view. Not everyone started to wear kippers, and not everyone put off, took off their kippers. So, um, so when, when is, is this going to last forever? Or the moment uh, the war ends, uh, half a year after that, perhaps then there will be no more um, unity. So these are two very important questions that we are going to discuss in our show today, in addition to the basic uh, um, a a lesson that the, the uh, Alter Rebbe is teaching us over here. Yes, Rabbi. There can be unity in the fact that you know, this side that believes this about the, where the country should go, and this side who believes this. But deep down in their Jewish soul, they want what's best for the country. Mm -hmm. So they're unified by that. Right. It's There's like, a basis to the unity. It's like when a, a sports team has this inner office bashing. It's, they're both fighting to win. Right. For the team to win. Right. So, the bottom line you know. Right. Interesting. Uh -huh. This is connected to what the Alter Rebbe is going to teach us. Where does the unity within Am Yisrael come from? Yes, yeah, from there. Us, it comes from Ishechad Kelevechad. Oh, okay, so this is the, Yaakov Meir told us the key words to the idea that the Rebbe brings out and the difference between the unity between the two. So we, we're going to discuss this in depth. Yeah. If we don't have, uh, have like Wolski back, we <laughs> um, Rabbi Rosenbaum is going to give this year to David Rav Hashem, and I think next week Rabbi Kowalski is already going to be back. Or next week, or the following one. Okay, let's start with um, with Al Tareb, with the words of Al Tareb, and the first paragraph. Um, and so also, I would like to welcome paragraph. David. Welcome, thank you for joining us. Ruchim um, uh, Let's start with the first uh, uh, paragraph, acting on the suggestion mentioned above. Chanoch, please start. Which actually brings up. Uh Intense disunity. What? The, the this first paragraph. Acting on the suggestion mentioned above to view one's body with scorn and contempt and finding only the joy of the soul alone. That's not unity. 
as a direct and easy it way to easy. attain the fulfillment of the com commandment, thou shalt love thy fellow as thyself to every soul of Israel, both great and small. Without the body, we can't do mitzvot. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Let's see. Let's see what the Antarab says. Continue? Yes, please continue because it's just uh, yeah. For whereas one despises and loathes one body, while as for the soul and spirit, we can know their greatness and excellent in the root and source of the living God, being moreover all of a kind and all of having one Father. Therefore, all Israelites are called real brothers by virtue of the source of their souls in the one God. Only the bodies are separated. Hence, in the case of those who give major consideration to their bodies while regarding their souls as of secondary importance, there can be no true love and brotherhood among them, but only a love that is dependent on a transitory thing. Thank you. So this is the foundation to understanding what the Alter Rebbe says or the mitzvah of the Torah. This is not only a, a, a nice uh, uh, act of, uh, um, you know, a nice way to behave. But this is one of the mitzvahs that we say. We said every single morning, And again, what Hasidus is here for is to try and make us apply the mitzvahs and make them real. So it's not enough to say to your friend, yes, I love you, and in the meantime, you really don't mean that. Chassidus is here for us to make sure that this is reality, this is truly what I can feel. How can I feel that I, uh, uh, that I like someone else, even though I don't like uh, uh, his political views, I do not like his behavior, I do not like even the way he dresses? And this is what the Alter Rebbe says that the key lies within the soul, within the neshama. Because our neshama is truly one, we all come from the same source, we all come from the same uh, place, we all have the same Father, Hashem, and therefore, we are truly are all one. And Alter Rebbe says it depends on your view. If you will take a look at the body, and the body also includes um, the animal soul. The animal soul, each animal soul has different desires. It comes from a different place. We spoke about the different desires in chapter 29. We spoke about them in chapter uh, uh, 31 as well. That's a source for separation. That is the, uh, the, the real uh, um, uh, difference that we have between ourselves. Right. So, for example, um, a, a political view sometimes depends on the education that a person has or the type of, of, of nefesh of Ahamis. He's got more of a merciful soul, uh, uh, more connected to chesed. So that can influence his um, uh, political view um, or behavior or even his occupation, the path in life that he chooses. And in that case, Perhaps, I, and perhaps even the Alter Rebbe says that you, you might even have the right, that from that point of view, to disagree with your fellow friend. However, if we take a look at the neshama, at the soul, so the soul is truly united. So first of all, because we are, we are the sons of Hashem, and we all have the same Father, but it's not only that, that's not the only idea. So after all, the sons of the father, they are separated, right? And we know that, the, that sometimes fights do break out in family. And, um, and, 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 and this can cause separation. And here we come to the second quality of the neshama, that the, the souls themselves, they are truly one piece. Which means it's like fire. You cannot really, you cannot really separate fire. There are no, there's no such, uh, I'll give you another example, um, there, there isn't really a, a difference with, uh, um, between sparks of, of, of sparks of fire. It's all the same element and it's truly one. It might be in several places, right? Like it says even about Eliyahu Anavi, he shows up to every bris. 
every bris miller Eliyahu Anav is there. And, and, and one, of the, uh, one of the questions is, how can he do it? So, he, uh, um, he, it's, it's, one, it's, it's basically one, perhaps, I don't know the exact way to describe it, an angel, or maybe a, a, um, Eliyahu Anavi, um, uh, it's not really an angel, it doesn't seem like really an angel, but um, there are several ways that he appears. So that's why he can be at the same uh, at time in different places. That is our neshama. To one neshama, we are all part of one unit. And that is why if we put a focus on the neshama, so there is no difference between one and another. And, um, uh, and, and, and yes, the bodies are separated. And for this reason, if we put a big emphasis on the bodies, so this is a, a, an obstacle in front of the unity. This is an obstacle. This person, he has this type of mentality. He has this look, this approach, this occupation, uh, this family, whatever it might be. These are all connected to the body. So Hanoch, you pointed out before that without the body we cannot keep the mitzvahs. That's 100% right. We, there is an importance that we uh, show the body, and we appreciate the body very much. But unity comes from the soul. Uh, the body is the tool, the way that we interact with the world around us, and the way that we are able to keep the mitzvot, to observe the mitzvot, to practice them. Also, this line to view one's body with scorn and contempt, does it mean to, that, it, that it's worthy of scorn and contempt, or that... Uh, so, yeah, yeah so, so it's interesting. Nachan? That's a question. Is it true, or is it like a strategic... Is it just to, to convince us? So, um... Is that, is that what those words mean? Mas is like, isn't that like, like inconvenient, or no? Right, so, he looks at it in a way that he, Nivzeh um, comes from the word of Bizayon, um, perhaps it's shame, shameful, and Nimas, uh, he, he had enough of it, he doesn't appreciate, doesn't cherish it. So, the, 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 the basic level that Hasidus explains is yes, and we'll see it soon, uh, uh, we saw it with, we actually saw it in the past with Hillel. Hillel Azak, and it says that when he, went, when he went to eat, when he went to have meal, it wasn't for, it was just ligmal chesed im ha which means to uh, uh, act in a kind way with the poor body um, that he has. But he didn't appreciate the body itself. Nebuch. Nebuch, exactly. But in Hasidus, it really says that there is a big, big ad advantage and ma'ala. Uh, um, to the to the body, and that's why the bo the body is holy. You know where you see it that the body is holy is with the amazing work that Zaka does. And if you think about it, there's no other place in the world that there are people that basically go around and spend hours and hours just to take care of the body. This is a guf kadosh. Um, uh, it's not only for the reason of tchias amesim, right? This is why even uh, bodies of soldiers, they were rescued by the, by the IDF and bodies of hostages that were rescued because yes, there is an importance um, to the body. So... And they even buried like all the cars because they couldn't extract all the different... Nacham, nacham, nacham. Is it possible that the, the, there's a distinction here between the, the, like having some uh, you know, negative feelings towards our physical reality versus being aware that like this the, the appearance of individual of the individuals and separation is the thing that's detestable to us. But we don't we're not we're not necessarily um, looking at at physicality with disgust. Right. Just the fact that like now there's a like, it seems like we're not or we're not one. Right. So we sort of we sort of like take a position against the fact that we're we're somehow have have to live in a reality where it, it seems like we're different people. Right. 
Um, so, 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 what it seems like, uh, uh, um, also in order to explain your an answer to your question, perhaps it's, it's an answer, is that there's the ultimate um, shape of the body, shape which means the use of the body, and there's um, um, there's the technical side of the body. And I'll give you an example. It says about the tzaddikim that even though the tzaddikim, um, they have no yetzer hara, which means they don't do bad at all, right? But nevertheless, when they enter this world, it is considered to be a yerida, which means it's a, a reduce in their level of holiness and kedusha. Why is that? Technically, it's because of the body. The body cannot stay awake 24-7 and learn Torah. The neshama had the ability to stay awake. It didn't have the challenges. There's no concept of sleep. So that's why I was able to connect to Hashem in an unlimited form. So the body is a bit of... Truly, uh, it has a side of separation. But um, the use that we can use the body for and what it will be in the world to come... That is uh, um, the side of, of holiness that the body has. <coughs> so, it's, it's, first of all, it's not, uh, um, it's not only a tactic that we are trying to convince a person that he should uh, look at the, the body. Is a, a, um, a, 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 it's not a, a pure vessel in order to serve Hashem. It can be used to serve Hashem, but there are l l certain limits that a body needs to eat. There's nothing to do about it. Um, but Hasidus, so, 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 so this is basically the first, um, this is the first idea behind it. And, and, and truly the, the time that the body, it says that La Tidlavo, um, our bodies, they will um, reflect the real source where they come from, which is from Atmos. This is the highest level of Hashem. And they won't need the soul to give it a living force. The body itself will have this, this living force, but that is only in the world to come. This is not something that we <clears throat> use today. And in the world to come, it's a whole question whether the limitations of the body will exist or, or not. Right? And we know that one of the signs that we are coming closer to Moshiach is the scientific developments. And one of the scientific developments is improving the human body to the extent that there are certain facilities that are working on a, a body that can live for, for many, many more years than what we are able to live today. I, I, so I don't know if this answered your second um, question. I, just because <clears throat> it, it, it starts out like it's a muster board, like you should hate your body, and then you would think it would say, because it keeps you from the vacus, you yeah. know, it distracts you and it, and it pulls you into pursuing pleasures, but it doesn't go in that direction. It goes in the direction of, because it's an impediment to being a, a sense of unity amongst all Israel, because it gives the appearance, this was my, yeah. it gives the appearance that we're not all one. Like, I'm an individual, and now I'm in competition with you, I'm vying for the same, you know, dollar that you want, or whatever it is, or I want to, you know, look like a, a macher, you know, I want my name up there, then I'm a lamplighter, you know, and all that, yeah. and that's only because I have a body. Right. But, but in reality, like, I gave that money, right? Right. Right. But but because I'm because we're all one, right. and that this thing is getting in the way of of me perceiving that you know we're we're just all one shama, as opposed to this thing is getting in the way of my individual vacas with the shem because I it's it pulls me into the pursuit of pleasure. Right. But at the, so end, at the end, the body is a plus, not the minus. Why? The fun sava agra. Right. It's, it's more about the use that, that we can use the body to. We must, we must make an effort. Right. Which, if to we use sense, we wouldn't have to make any effort. Right. So, I would, so, hmm? I would, I would mind that. There, there is, I'm, I'm still trying to understand your question again. What, so, so that, there are several levels with actors when we yeah, talk yeah, about I'm the not, unity. I'm not disgusted by the by the the needs of the body, which it seems like the direction that it takes immediately. Because mm -hmm. you should be like shame. It's like right. 
but not because it's a place that I get distracted from my avoda, but specifically because it's it's a divisive experience in my in my soul's connection to every other soul. It, it gives the appearance that I I'm an individual. Right. And then I as as such, you know, it activates my ego and my sense of, you know, wanting to be wherever, you know. So that that it's not so much that I'm I'm disturbed by the fact that I have a body that has all these needs or these or, or chases these pleasures, that it's like a musser thing. It's like, no, it's it's a it's I, if I appreciate how much it interferes with my sense of being connected to you know to, to all of the Jewish people, you know, as we're one like like Yaakov Meir said, you know, Isha Chabaleva Chad, but even more so one Shama, that that's the, the root of, of this perspective. Right, right. So there, there are two ways that we could, um, uh, the words of the Alter Rebbe seem to be Musadik. There's a, a, a famous um, a famous story about one of the Shaykhatim of the, of, um, the Tzemach Tzedek. And then there were many towns that were uh, mixed with Hasidim and with Misnagdim. And what happened was, is that they always had a debate, well, who should be the Rav and who should be the Shaykhet? So the agreement was that the Rav should be uh, uh, the Litvak, the Misnaget, he'll give the strong Halacha, and the Chassid, he will be the Shaykhet. And this is all based on a saying of the Tzemach Tzedek, for the Chalafim of the Zayda, you have to have Mesiris Nefesh, which means that for the um, for the, the chalafim or the knives that the shaykhatim use, you have to uh, you have to give up everything. So, but there was one town that, um, for some reason, I think they 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 saw that the shaykh wasn't doing his uh, his uh, his job properly, and um, they summoned the chassidim and they said we have to uh, we have to um, uh, change him. We, we, we can't have this. So I think that that shaykh himself. Um, said, you know what, let's have a debate over Gemara. And he started to ask the rabbi of the town, um, do you know this in this Tosfos? And the rabbi started to say it by heart. And then, do you know the Masha? The Masha, he already did not know the Masha. is one of the commenters on the Tosfos, mainly speaks about the Tosfos. Um, and he started to say by heart the Masha. That's how they went back and forth. Several very uh, big, big sugyas in the Gemara and the Shechet, Suddenly, the people see that he can even replace the rabbi. So um, the Hasidim went, and, and they they kept him uh, as as the shochet. But then the Hasidim said, "This is not uh, this is gaava. Uh, this is yeshut. This is feeling yourself. Why did you start boasting over your uh, knowledge of the the Gemara of the sugyas?" So the shochet says. That the Tzemach Tzedek taught us that for the Chalafim of the Zayda, for the knives of the Alter Rebbe, you have to have Mesiris Nefesh. Now, the question about the story is, what is the Mesiris Nefesh over here? Where did you give up your, uh, um, yourself? On the contrary, you showed how knowledgeable you are, what a big Talmud Chacham you are. Here we see from the story that there are two ways to be bebitu. There are two ways to nullify ourselves. One way is through sometimes literally, um, uh, like uh, Hillel Azakin said, he's going to uh, have a, a, a breakfast with the aluva. Why? Because he didn't want to invest uh, uh, 30, 40 minutes in preparing his breakfast. But sometimes the mysterious nefesh itself requires the opposite to, to make a very good breakfast. Right? And we, sorry? He do a mitzvah. Hidur mitzvah, right? And a person will say, why should I be mahadr in my Shabbos table? Yes, that's part of the mitzvah. The mitzvah is to mahadr in a Shabbos. There is no room over this. So maybe that can answer your question, uh, where is the Alter Rebbe um, um, leading us over here? Because on, on the one hand, we see that he's telling us, Musa, that the guf is nivza bedimas be'am. Sometimes a person needs that as well. Because when, you know, when we walk into the room, so there are, t there are two ways that... That, that we can walk into. We can walk into the room like we own the place, or we can walk into the room. Okay, I'm joining the. I'm jo I, I, I'm joining the whatever 
wherever we go, the, the bris, the simcha, whatever it might be. So, these, and, and on, on the other hand, yes, yeah, sometimes if you want to, uh, you know what, if, if, if you have true um, Ahavas Yisrael, the biggest Ahavas Yisrael is to go and help your friend out, to give him a piece of advice, to help him in a situation. If you come with, who am I to say to him what to do? And, and, and uh, uh, that's Aniva Shalai Bim Kaiba, the extreme cases, the Gemara says, a chassid shaita is a chassid that is not prepared to save a, mo a woman that is dry, dry, drowning in the, in the river. Right, because it's not uh, it's not appropriate for me to do such a thing. So maybe that's the balance between the two. Yaakov Meir, sorry. Just quick point yeah. yeah. Point. Is your is your Hebrew when you translate it as scorn and contempt? You could put it to test. It, it, it's uh, yeah. It is nivzev and nimas be'enav. Rak simchase. The only simcha that a person should have. Simchas hanefesh levado, and then he continues. Kime achar shegufa nimasum atuav etzla. He's disgusted with his body. The nefesh v'aruach mi aydeg dulas enam the soul. Who knows how great the soul of 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 a yid is? Rak shegufi mechulakim. So, so these. The, 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 I think the simple and and this is one of the one of the. Powerful things that the Alter Rebbe writes. It's not a book for tzaddikim; it's a book for benon, which means any person can go and open the book. The thing that is most um, uh, uh, um, connected and what we feel we are material people after all. So the Alter Rebbe is making it clear that if you put a focus on materialism, you're going to find more and more division, more separation. Specifically because a person just the body needs space. The neshama doesn't need space. Space does not does not exist. Right? They say it. too many people around the table, right? So, 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 so that's a source of separation in the most basic way. Yes? So is that the emphasis because it says the Ahasuerecha Kamocha, meaning like yourself, so therefore to have the proper perspective you have to realize that who you are is not your group, who you are is your Neshama. So the key to, to Avas Yisrael is first being real, being aware that you are completely lovable because the only thing that really matters is your neshama, which Hashem doesn't have any negative, you know, relationship to. He only has, you know, seemingly a negative relationship to the poor choices we make regarding our bodies. That's a very interesting point. So it's it's not basically from the words of the Alter Rebbe, but it's, it's a, I think it's a very good point, and it's definitely more than hinted over here. They, they say that what what is the uh, one of the uh, one of the, the um, limits to the mitzvah is that it has to be kamoicha, like yourself. So you can't favor someone else more than yourself. And this has to do with it, it, it's a big principle in uh, education and in relationship and in everything that uh, we, we there has to be a priority to the person. The Torah itself wants. The person to take care of themselves and to the ones that are close to him. Sometimes it's easier to take care of someone that's far out, far away, but it has to be kamecha. And yes, uh, um, uh, definitely, we put an emphasis on, on our neshama. He doesn't speak directly about the connection of Hashem to the neshama, but that that is where it comes from. Av echad lekulana, we are pure, and and hanefesh varuach mi agdeg dulasin malasin. It could be a person that he seems like a very simple, but he's got a, a, a holy neshama, a very holy neshama. Yes, Yaakov It's written, Yifat Torah, Yifat Which is physical, right. spirit, but also physical. Right. It has importance. Yes, yes. For sure, as a tool to serve Hashem. Yeah. Right? The, 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 sorry? Also here it says, one has to, to, to scorn one's own body, not the, the body of the other person. <laughs> Because it's also separation. Oh. The, the body, the other person is actually the tool to connect with the other person. It starts from yourself. It's not a chokhmah to go to someone else and say your body uh, does not matter at all. No, okay. 100%. Mm -hmm. right. So, so it, all, it all starts from the person himself. And once again, this is why Hasidus is and celebrating you to Kislev Shabbos. This is why Hasidus is is uh, uh, is real because it speaks to us. We're not here to educate anyone else. It's to ourselves. We, there was one um, was one rabbi that 
he was uh, he was fabricating with us and he told us um, that the big big chiddush of the Alter Rebbe uh, here is you know sometimes it's very hard to feel this connection, right? Because after all, you know, we sit, we learn all of this, but to feel the real connection to the person that's uh, perhaps uh, uh, hooting in the middle of the street, if I have to like achakamocha, how can I how can I really feel it? But the chiddush of the Alter Rebbe is that you can understand it very much. And the moment we can understand it, it means it's true. There's sometimes what's called Meitzara Garon Mitzrayim, that it does not go from the mind, from our understanding to our feeling and to our actions, perhaps, not all the time. But it's, it's good to know that this is realistic. Vahavta L'Recha Kamocha is not just uh, uh, Hashem telling us, oh, you've got to act kind and you've got to appreciate everyone, but it's something real, it's something we can understand. Okay, let's continue. Um, this is basically um, a story that is brought out. Whoever says it very in, in, in short words. This is a story of um, a Gentile that came to convert. And when he came to uh, Beis Shammai, to his Beis Din, he asked, uh, he asked him to teach uh, uh, Shammai himself, to teach him the entire Torah on one foot. So Shammai, it says, went and he took Amas opinion, which is basically uh, um, uh, something that has to do with con construction, the measuring, and he chased him out of his uh, base thing. He didn't accept the request. He went to Hillel, and Hillel famously said um, that the mitzvah, that is the entire Torah on one foot. So let's see the way that the Alter Rebbe explains it, and I would like to ask Yaakov Goldman to uh, please read for us. Third paragraph. Uh, this is what Hillel the elder meant when he said in regard to the fulfillment of the commandment, this is the whole Torah, whilst the rest is but commentary and so on. For the basis and root of the entire Torah are to raise and exalt the soul high above the body, reaching unto the source and root of all the worlds, and also to bring down the blessed light of the Ein Sof upon the community of Israel, as, we, as will be explained later that is, into the fountainhead of the soul of all Israel, to become one into one. This is impossible if there is, God forbid, disunity among the souls. For the Holy One, blessed be He, does not dwell in an imperfect place as we pray. Bless us, O our Father, all of us together, with the light of thy countenance, as has been explained at great length elsewhere. Interesting. <clears throat> Interesting. It says about the mitzvahs in general that Loinitna mitzvahs li Israel ela the zakech bohem es Most of the mitzvahs, if you'll take a look, they have to do with, um, uh, um, with a, lo a lot with purifying and elevating um, our life and ourselves. The Torah could uh, not forbid us from eating everything. Or, or specific foods, but the Torah decides to say, yes, there are certain foods that we don't eat. By the way, if you'll take a look, and this is also an important difference between Judaism and what we see in other, in, in other religions, the Torah never ever forbids us completely from a certain part of the world. The Torah does not say, for example, meat you aren't allowed to eat, alcohol you're not allowed to drink. Um, and why is that? Sorry? It's a Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, 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 and why is that? It's because it says that we have to um, enjoy the world around us. The Bishvili, uh, 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 a person has to say, Chayav Adam Leimar Bishvili Nivra Elam. The world was created for me. But with the Torah, what the Torah does do, it does take what we can see around us and it basically says certain parts you aren't allowed to benefit from. And that is in order that we should um, uh, aspire to spirituality, to holiness, and, and less and less to um, materialism. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the idea of Hillel Azokan. When Hillel Azokan is basically saying this is the entire Torah, uh, and it's not only because it's a key to the Torah, but is literally every single part of the Torah is 
put an emphasis on the soul and less and less on the body, right? The body is a tool in order to keep the mitzvah. We won't be able to actually observe 99% uh, uh, or 100% of the mitzvahs without a body, but within those mitzvahs themselves, we have to make sure, and that's the point of the mitzvahs, that um, it, does not, it does not serve the body, it serves the soul. The body is the method that we use in order to um, elevate it. Okay? What's that, what does that mean at the end where he says in English does not dwell in the imperfect place? Um, uh, Hashem, it's very important for him to see um, the unity of Am Yisrael. Because Hashem, it says, what, what is Sitra Achra? In Sitra Achra there's many. There's period. Sitra Achra is uh, 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 plural. Kedusha Real Kedusha is, uh, is united, is, it, there, there is only unity. By the way, this is a word from the Kli Akar that he says at the beginning of Chumash Devarim, that there are two ways that Hashem interacts with us and, and, and judges us. One is according to the mitzvahs that we keep, whether we keep them or not. And the other one is about the Achdus, which means that even if we do not keep the mitzvahs, Hashem says, once you are united, I'm going to keep you safe. Because again, the unity of the brothers proves that there is a father. That's it's, it's one plus one in that sense. If, if the brothers aren't united, it means that there's no real father because you're acting like you're not brothers. So it's not a, a, no, there's no real father here. Well, and, well, sorry? Well, five minutes, well, first missile of Jerusalem. Yeah. Right, so Exactly. We're not running. The coffee shops are open. Wow. It's 18 months of protesting. It was all by one. So, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to speak about that a bit more to see how we can continue with this sense of achdut, sense of unity. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a big well, challenge. Yeah. So. So that is, uh, uh, there's period and there is unity. Hash so, so this is a vote on the Kriyaka. The Kriyaka says, by the way, that the first temple, why was it mainly destroyed? First temple was destroyed mainly because of the sins. The second temple was destroyed because of the lack of unity, because of the free hatred. Sin uh, Um Okay. Uh, so, so here, perhaps we can speak about um, the uh, the unity in our days and how we could extend it. So um, there are two levels, generally speaking, of unity. Here, the Altarab put it, puts an emphasis on uh, the neshama, which shows that we are really one source. There's a different type of unity, and this is also brought in Hasidus, and this is connected to Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kulchem, right before Rosh Hashanah. Hashem tells us what is the way to grant yourself a good year. By the way, the Aten Nitzavim, when Moshe Rabbeinu gathers them all and tells them his last words before they are about to enter the land and before he passes on. So what, the, uh, um, what, what Moshe Rabbeinu is telling them is that the key to your success is unity. And here he tells us, Aten Nitzavim Hayam Kulchem, you are all one. Roshechem Shivtechem, the leaders of the tribes, the big, big Zkeinecha, uh, um, the uh, um, your judges, all of you are one with those that have to chop wood and bring them into the village, and that bring in the water. And that is to show that everyone there is something that he is useful for. This is another level of achdus of unity, which means that. Even without taking a look at the neshama, and sometimes the neshama comes out only when terrible things happen, you know, like this. And this is that the Hamas, they don't um, um, care if it's a leftist, if it's someone that's with a kippah, that's well, without obviously, a kippah. Obviously. obviously, right? And that is the, that they, what do they care about? About the neshama. They also don't look at the bodies. They look at the neshama. This is a Jew, so I'm going to kill him. And that is the beginning of the Achdut. That's the first level of the high level. Of, we can't 
Lechora, it's hard to, we, not, we can't, but it's hard to live in this way, in this tension, that we are all one, and I'm only going to put a focus on my Neshama, and that's it. Then, the, the ongoing Achdut is perhaps a lower level Achdut, but an Achdut that we can, a sense of unity that we can um, develop throughout time, and understand how each person contributes something else, and that is how we become one and complete. So there are the soldiers that are in the Gaza Strip, fighting. There are the pilots that are supporting them from above. There are the intelligence that are sitting in the offices, but for sure their role is very, very big, very important. There are the yeshiva bachrim that are sitting and learning. And that is a very important part of this. Uh, uh, of this. There's a soldier that his father um, gives here classes every Thursday in Hebrew. <coughs> and... Um, his class, uh, uh, he was in, in Gaza and his father told us that one day at, uh, I, I, I asked him um, what is the plan for the next year, what is the subject, he told me sorry I cannot give the shir, my son is in Tel Hashomer in a hospital, he was injured in Gaza. And he um, tells stories about uh, miracles that they had. It's not an easy fight at all, um, uh, they've been preparing for this for years, and and we see miracles. Where do the miracles come from? They come from the prayers, and they come from the learning. So here we see how, um, yes, he has a different approach. He has a different body, perhaps. And I, I wouldn't be him. I'm not going to become a, um, a yeshiva bomber. I'm not going to study in yeshiva all day. Right. But I can appreciate what he does from his place, from his perspective, that is also Achdut. And that is an ongoing Achdut, and I think um, that this is something that people are going to be taking on, not only until the war is over, but I think a, a lot afterwards. How long, again, depends on, uh, it depends on us, but this is something that we can practice, that we can go to. Um, a lot of soldiers also, that they tackless, they, the, they are the ones that are experiencing it. And there are a lot of organizations, Baruch Hashem, we also had this chut to do it here from the Beit Chabad. We went to army bases, we had uh, events for them, barbecues and things like that. And they see that, yes, the Frum world is very, very much drafted and, and, and a part of, um, of what's happening. Supporting them, supporting the, the morale, and that's one of the most important things, is that the morale is strong. It's, it's not, I mean, it's clear that, right, like you said, like, they, they see us, they don't see our bodies as distinguishing us from one another. It's, they, it's, a, yeah. great, it's a great it's, insight. Right. Unfortunately, we have to, we, we experience that in order to understand it, that we are really one. They, they barely distinguish between Arabs and Jews. Right. So, so within, and, and also to them, in, in, in their ideology, there is, no, there is no real difference. There's no real difference. A yid is a yid. And that galvanizes, you know, the Kali Because yeah. Jews everywhere go, oh, I'm hated the same way that guy's hated. Yeah. And, in, and I'm sure in the United States, people are also feeling it, even though they say they belong to one side of the political map. And they were they are very liberal and very open. Perhaps they even supported the certain uh, claims of the Palestinians. And suddenly they see that they are in the same in the same from the river till the sea. Okay, let's continue. Um, let's continue with the next um, uh, paragraph. As for the Talmudic, Yaakov Baruch, please read for us. As for the Talmudic statement to the fact that the one. The one who sees his friend sinning should hate him and should feel and should tell his teacher to hate him also. This applies to companion, companion in Torah and to sets. Having already applied to him the injunction, you shall repeatedly rebuke thy friend, meaning him who is with thee, with, with thee in Torah and in sets, and who nevertheless has not repented of his sins as stated in Sefer Haredim. So there is, we know from the, uh, from the Talmud, the Gemara says that if someone sees um, his friend that sinned, 
So mitzvah, there's no, so there is a mitzvah um, to hate him, that's the expression. Um, and uh, and uh, this seems like something that doesn't really uh, amplify Avas Yisro. Right? This is not Avas Yisro. And so, so, so the, the Rebbe says that there are very strict conditions. We cannot just go and hate someone because of the Torah and mitzvahs. These are certain people that you, out of love, have already um, spoken to him, try to show him the right way, and still he did not follow your, um, um, your advice and your teachings, so therefore you are allowed to hate him. And by the way, we see there's a great word from the last parasha. It says, um, Yaakov Avinu is coming to Lavan's house, and before that he meets a bunch of shepherds that they're waiting around the well. And he says, Yaakov, achai My brothers, where are you from? And why is he referring to them as brothers? And that leads to another question. Afterwards, he says, you shouldn't be wasting time. The day is still long. Why are you gathered all around here? You should go back to work. Since when does a stranger that just met you two minutes ago start giving you advice and telling you what to do? He starts off with the word Achai, my brothers, which means he's showing them affection and care. He appreciates them, and then the whole uh, um, the whole attitude is is uh, is completely different. That is the key to real avatisa, and it's you know what? That's also a sign because yes, sometimes we have to um, show people the right way. Yes, it could be someone that is already advanced in Torah and Mitzvahs and for some reason he doesn't keep a certain part. Or it could be a person that's in the beginning of his journey. What is the way? The way is with true Avat Yisrael that is like Aharon um, and this is what we'll see. Um, uh, this is like, uh, yeah, this is what we'll see now. Uh, in the next uh, in the next paragraph, Avalia, please read for us the fifth paragraph on the first page. But as for the person who is not one's colleague and is not on intimate terms with him, Yalal the elder said, "Be of the disciples of our own, loving peace, and pursuing peace, loving the creatures, and drawing them near to the Torah." This means that even in the case of those who are removed from God's Torah and His service, and are therefore classified simply as creatures, one must attract them with strong cords of love. The chance one might succeed in drawing them near to the Torah and divine service. Even if one fails, one is not forfeited the merit of the precept of neighborly love. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so, so th there's an important part of what we learn from Aaron. By the way, is that to to firmly support the side of Torah, it says that Aaron used to bring um, the people closer to Torah. He didn't bring the Torah closer to them. This is something that the Rebbe spoke about a lot right at the beginning of the Kirov movement because it was a new thing. Not many people were involved in Kirov. And it's, uh, um, sometimes it's perhaps more convenient to take the Torah and to make the Torah more appealing or to change certain things in the Torah so it fits the crowd. But Aharon's way was that no, Torah is Torah and still uh, uh, this is reality, which, uh, this is what we're supposed to do. But still nevertheless, even if a person does not follow it, I can still find a... Um, <coughs> Where to, uh, uh, um, where to like him, love him, appreciate him, etc. Excuse me. Yes. When was the idea of Katan uh, Shenishba? Tinok Shenishba. When was it established, this idea? Um, it's a good question. Why? I've got to look into the exact time that it Why? was. Uh, we know it's about I history. I want to know if it's before this or after this. Uh, the, for sure, Tinochinishba is before this. So, 
So why this, if whoever makes a head, is it in Ocean For a reason or for another? Because of the, how he was brought up. Right. The I'll give you a, living in. So there was a halakhic question, and uh, um, if a person walks into uh, into the Bet Chabad and he we, we, he's a Mechalel Shabbat, and maybe perhaps he's not uh, doing it right now, but he's a Mechalel Shabbat, and I want to give him an Aliyah. Can I give him an Aliyah or not? Depends from the shul. Depends on the shul. <laughs> <laughs> so here, this is the rabbis that I spoke to is that he has a din of a tinok shenishba. So therefore you are allowed to give him an aliyah. And there are several ways to understand what is tinok shenishba. But part of the things of tinok shenishba is that it's someone that is not used to um, Torah mitzvahs. He could be aware that there is such a thing, but uh, he doesn't live it. So for him suddenly to change, he, he's still in jail in a certain way. I think tinok so shenishba is an original... So how this? Um, so here we're not talking about hating um, a tinok shenishba. Well, hating, even in the third, in the, in the last one, he said, nevertheless you have to hate him, and you also have to love him. Right, right. So, 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 so like this, it doesn't. It doesn't so, makes he makes it clear that it's after you did hoicher, after hoicher tamitech, only after you, um, uh, uh, what's the word, re uh, rebuked him, and taught him the right ways of Torah. So now he's no more a Tinoch Shanishba and he's doing it on purpose. And besides what he's going to say later well, he on. He knows. He knows really well. He so there's a difference mean. between someone that knows and someone that is, that, that, that is part of it. They Even, know. They of know. course they know. Everyone knows that you're not allowed to Mechalel um, Shabbat. But he still has the Din of Tinoch Shanishba. Okay. And that's you why you, you, you don't have to. Him. You can't eat him. And the Alter Rebbe is not referring to that person. But here. Where? In the last paragraph? Yes. So that we'll see. That is uh, that is something that has to do with uh, um, King David. That uh, we're talking about a mumar, a person that knows a hundred percent, and on purpose he wants to change his behavior. Uh, uh, he's an apicorus. You know the story mm -hmm. that the Rebbe Rayat said about an apicorus. There was one person that came to the, the, the sorry, this is the previous Rebbe, the Rebbe Rayat, and he told him, "I'm an apicorus." So the, so the previous Rebbe said. Do you know how many books you have to learn to become an Epicorus? Mm -hmm. You can't just come and say, declare, I'm an Epicorus. You've got to learn all the Rambam. You've got to learn the Gemara. Elisha you know? ben Avuya. Elisha ben Avuya. Uh, right? Yeah, so, a good friend. It's like, you know, it's not, it doesn't keep. Yeah. And it'll be like, I'm such an Epicorus. I'm like, dude, you're not even close. <laughs> <laughs> right. You went to TA, like, you know, high school. <laughs> Right. Right. Near Jake, like you don't know that, you're not close to him. Right. You know, so, when I went to, to learn Hebrew, the, how do you call it? Ulpan. Ulpan. Yeah. I had a teacher, he was from Ukraine. Yeah. He was a marvelous teacher, yeah. excellent teacher. And he was uh, not religious at all, not even a young keeper. And he lived in a very religious area. And he used to say to us, I'm a Chiloni, but when Shabbos I come back home with my car, I don't park near. Mm -hmm. I park the far. <laughs> so, can you hate a person like him? No, and not he, at all. He knows. What does it mean he knows? He knows technically that this no, is not he allowed. Knows. He knows. Not only. Uh, uh, Shaila is how. If it doesn't motivate you, it's not real knowledge. Excuse me? If it doesn't motivate you, it's not real knowledge. It's, no. just, it's just data. It's, it's not real it's, information. It's, yeah. Meaning, if you understood it, meaning that's to know it, then by perforce Listen, you would keep it. You can't know. To know, to know. There is, there's no link. That's no, a nice little philosophical. Now, here it doesn't talk about one who knows. It says a yes. colleague, a companion, somebody who's right. intimate. The emphasis it's is not just that he knows. Okay. He yeah, doesn't know. He's got to be in the gedder. Another thing is that you can't. You, you Let's say there's another person that he's not a Tinoch Shanishba. So, and so he's what? He, he knows very well. Okay. Do I have the permission to, do, to hate him? So it says, no, this is what the Atreba says from Sefer Haredim. He has to be your friend. He has to be someone that is under your influence, that is in your connection, that you have a chance 
to so uh, now, influence him to do good. And if he doesn't listen, so that means that, uh, um, you know, sometimes they say that if someone's not prepared to listen to your help and to your advice, don't help him. I Why? Know. Because he's just playing, he's just, he's not going to help himself, you know. Sometimes people are, they ask for help a lot, but they, uh, they mean the opposite. They're not going to really follow it. There so here we're talking about a person that has the potential to listen to you, and nevertheless he doesn't, there is a mitzvah, so it's a mitzvah even. Why? There so is, he doesn't affect you. There is a, a, a very known yeah. fact a very important Hasid, Hasidic Babich Rao, yeah. whose son was teaching Tanya, and he was himself a Rao, a Rao. Yeah. and he was involved also in Shiva Mitzvah Belenoach, mm -hmm. so he had a lot to do with Goyans. Yeah. You know the story? I I'm not 100% not sure if I know. He married a Muslim. Wow. He divorced his wife. He's got his children from his first wife going to Yeshiva. He married a Muslim. He had children with a Muslim. So I'm asking you. And in his family, some ate him. Most of them ate him. And some, very few, very few, embrace him. Right. It's a very, it's a very interesting question. So, so there are several. So it depends. David the America higher, is very specific. The higher the, the knowledge of the people of this family, the more they embrace, they embrace him. him. That's very interesting. Right. So, so there's a few things. First of all, um, what is a, a, there's a difference between a mumar le ta'ava and a mumar, the other word is yes, mumar. Lahachis. Le Lahachis. Le so that is much less of a problem. Because, and this is another question, what is, uh, can we say, I, I don't know if it's the fi alocha, or maybe more the fi uh, hergesh, and the, the way of encouraging people and bringing people close. Sometimes a tinok shen ishba is even a person that knows very well. But he is shavui in the hands of his yetzer hara. We know that he has a big, big Yetzirah and it's hard for him to overcome it. So, no, he general means, people's Yetzirah... Uh, he, he means it. He thinks it's uh, Shiva Mitzvot del Noah is his goal. Okay, so, 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 so... And everything else is... So that's, okay, so it's another question. Uh, um, what is his, what is the uh, specific Yetzirah there? What is the type of Mumar that he is? And, and according no, to that... not a Mumar. He's not a real mumar. So, so, so there's more way to say that he is a tinok shenishba. You know, sometimes it's a tinok shenishba because he was born in such a way. And sometimes uh, the yetzer was so strong that, that he just couldn't, uh, he couldn't control it. Um, to say that, it's a very, very interesting uh, chapter. And thank you very much for taking part. There's Rat Hashem, the Pesorot um, for all of Am Yisrael. We are actually now, we are doing uh, um, an end year fundraiser. We do it every year towards uh, the month of November and the end of December. And it's an opportunity to take part in all the activities of the Bet Chabad, also the Bet Midrash. But Baruch Hashem, we try and reach beyond um, events like the Talucha, Leila Seder, Purim, and also because of the current war, reaching out to soldiers and mainly to the families that stay back here. We have a whole uh, group of wives of soldiers that are now in Miluim, and we provide them with, uh, with hot meals and events for the children, babysitter and things like that. So whoever can take part, you can you're welcome to uh, directly contact me, and this is very much appreciated, and Be'ezrat Hashem to all of Am Yisrael.